Hello, I'm Kurt Steinbrook, pastor of Faith Lutheran Church in Wesley Chapel, Florida, and we are going through the book of Romans, just a few verses at a time. Today, we're going to be looking at Romans 8.28 and talking about that passage that many people are familiar with, that God works all things uh, for good for those who love him. And so we're going to be looking at what does that mean exactly? And are all things supposed to be good? Does that mean I'm supposed to have a bunch of money? Does that mean all things work for good for everyone? Well, we'll take a look at that. But before we do, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this time that we have to spend with you and to to spend in your in the Bible, in your word. And we pray that you would uh, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your spirit to understand and receive your words, to accept what it says, and to believe it. And that through it, our faith would be strengthened, that we would be transformed to be more like Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, let's start by reading the passage. And we know that for those who love God, actually, let me share this with you. Hold on. I'm trying to share and then not share through the whole thing here. There we go. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So what are we talking about here? Let me stop the share. So a couple of things to keep in mind as we're going into this is what was going on before this. So before this, we've heard about how uh, we are groaning, how all of creation is groaning waiting for the coming of Christ because we've been subjected to this this life that is corrupted by sin. Both the, the sinful things that we do, the sinful things that are going on, just the effects of sin. There's death, there's suffering, there's all these things going on. And especially for Christians who are uh, maybe even being persecuted for the faith. So that's kind of the backdrop of this, that there's all these bad things that are going on. And yet, here he says, no, no, understand that we know that for those who love God, all things are working for good. They're working together for good for those who love, who uh, are called according to his purpose. Right. So rather than seeing, OK, well, this thing is just just plain bad and this thing is, you know, there's, there's just no hope with this. No, there's hope because God is at work here. And so he is working these things uh, for good. Now, just as a little grammatical uh, point of interest, throughout Romans, we find that uh, pretty much all of the, the words, the verbs that are used regarding our salvation, when it's something that uh, is happening, really, I should say, happening to us, they're passive, which is why they're happening to us. So, you know, we're, we're called. We're not doing the calling. We're not doing the seeking. We're called. Uh, we are buried with Christ. You know, all these things are passive verbs when it's something about us. But here, as it's God who's doing something here, he is the one who is working things for good. Now we get the imperative. Now we get the, the active verb because God is the one who acts in our salvation. All right. So let's kind of break this down just a little bit at a time. What does... Uh, for those who love God, me. For we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. So what does for those who love God mean? Is it, you know, only if you love God, then he's going to work for good? Or is it you better love God or he's not going to work these things for good for you? Or is it all who have been called by God and responded with love for him? Right. You that is the qualification that has been met. And it's really it's that last one. I'm sure you could tell just by my voice. It's it's rather it's saying that all those people who have been called by God, all Christians who've been called by God and responded with love for God, who have received that promise and believed in it. Right. That's our uh, our response to that um, is is an act of love. So we love God because he saved us. We love God because we hear that gospel and he's saying, I forgive you. And, you know, I've got this uh, inheritance and this life for you and all these things. And so we love God for this. It's our response uh, to put it 
is as it says it here in uh, 1 John 4:19. Right, this is not our. Uh, we're not the impetus of this. We're not the starters of this, as it says here. Uh, we love because he loved us first. So because God has loved us, he sent his son who died on the cross for us. He sent us that gospel that tells us of the promises of God. And we've received that salvation by receiving that promise in faith. We love God. You know, that's our response. So uh, well, I didn't share that. Man, I got to get better at this. Here we go. There's that passage. All right. So this is the first John we love because he first loved us. All right. So then the next thing it says is that it's all things work together for good. So what does that mean? Like all things are working together. Does that mean everything is good? Does that mean that, uh, you know, what, what does it mean? Basically, you know, what, what are the good things that it's working towards? Well, we get a, a glimpse of this in Genesis 50, 20, which is the story of Joseph. And Joseph, if you remember, he was uh, the favorite child of his father, Jacob. And uh, because of that, his brothers hated him and they uh, they were going to kill him. But then the oldest brother, Reuben, convinced them not to do that. So instead, they sell him off into slavery. And then they tell their father that he was killed by a wild animal and stuff. And he goes through all these things when he's uh, in Egypt. Uh, first, he's a slave, then he gets falsely accused of, uh, of assault on his master's wife. Then he's in prison for a long time, and everybody forgets about him in prison. He said they were going to help him. Finally, he gets put as the second in command of Egypt, and he's the one who's in charge of uh, helping Egypt and really all of the surrounding areas to survive this famine that's coming. And so when he confronts his brothers later on, they apologize for what they've done. They've, they've learned. Um, and then here's what he says. He says, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So that informs us quite a bit as to how this all works, right? So not everything is good. You know, in the in the case of Joseph, his brothers, they did evil to him and they meant it for evil. But even, God can take even those things, even those sinful things, those evil things, and he can still work them for good like he did with, with Joseph. So it's not saying that all things are good um, or that all things even are from God, but rather that, you know, there is evil. There are bad things, but God works even those the bad things for good. Now, what are the all things? Well, it's all things, <laughs> you know. So um, sometimes it may be physical and financial things. Sometimes it may not be. Um, and so we have a few passages that we can uh, look at to kind of get an idea of this. So in Psalm 145, let me show this. Oops. There we go. In Psalm 145, 15 to 16, it says, The eyes of all look to you, to God, right? And you give them their food in due season. In due season, sorry. You open your hand, you satisfy the, the desire of every living thing. Right? So this is that's food, right? That's our sustenance, the things that we need to live. Uh, James 117. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Right? So every good thing, every perfect gift is coming from God. Um, and those are the things that we need to live. Those are, uh, they can be financial things, but they can also be other things in our life, our, our relationships. They can be um, just our mental state. They can be our spiritual things that God does as he works through us. Um, ultimately, though, the focus is what we will get to in uh, a video or two here. I think it's the next video. Um, that the ultimate purpose of all of this, the ultimate good that's being done, is our salvation. And so this is where it all leads to is Romans 30. And for those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. 
right? That that is ultimately the good that God is working through all things. That's the biggest thing. So uh, the the ultimate focus is our freedom and our glorification, our salvation, right? When it's talking about glorification, it's heaven and and all the the great things that are uh, that are a part of that. Uh, but sometimes, you know, there may be a lacking in physical or financial things. Um, sometimes even suffering can actually be for our benefit in these things. As we read earlier in Romans, you know, suffering produces endurance, right? It strengthens our faith. Um, you know, the lacking of things when we uh, don't, you know, we're saying, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay the bill this month, or I'm not sure how we're going to uh, make it through this or through that, or you know, the suffering that we deal with illness and everything like that, those things often draw us closer to God. They they bring us closer to him. They make us to rely on him more. And that's good. That's part of the good that God is working. So, uh, you know, not all things are good, but God is working them all for good, even when it's suffering, even when there's lacking of this or that that God is using those things even for our good. And the good, is it's many things, but ultimately it's the salvation uh, that we have through Jesus Christ and that end uh, result of the glory of God that we will uh, live in his presence for all of eternity. And so it finishes up here and it says, let me share it back here. It finishes up here for those who are called according to his purpose. So now we once again uh, go back to our passive words um, because now we're talking about what's happening to us. So when it's active, when God's doing it, it's passive when it's for us uh, that we are called and it's according to his purpose. In case you're wondering uh, who is the one who's the actor, it's all according to God's purpose. And what is his purpose? Ultimately, it's our salvation. All right. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I pray this has been a blessing for you and uh, just a, a great time to be able to spend studying God's word. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.